This month we're reviewing our new RISC-V single board computer, showing off Pinell improvements, and we have updates on availability for the PinePhone, PinePhone Pro, and PineBook Pro. This is a video version of the community update, so it won't include everything, but we'll give you the synopsis, and thanks to Dizzy, Mick, Alex, and Lucas for helping out. Also check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd, for more open source related videos. Let's start by mentioning JF's guest blog post where he showcased the Quart 64's functionality as a NAS. He retrofitted it to show an ATX computer case fit the board and set it up with 6 SSDs. We had also liked in that Armbian's Debian is for the Quart 64, which makes more sense on a NAS than Manjaro does. Speaking of Quart 64, Quart's Pro 64 developer coupons will be out shortly, so if you signed up to purchase a unit, keep an eye out in your inbox. Pine64 EU is now finally ready to open its doors for business sometime next week. We apologize for the delay in the store's opening and you will be able to purchase the Pinephone, Pinephone Pro, the Pinephone keyboard case and Pinephone protective cases, the Pine Soul, and the Pine Time when the store launches from Pine64 EU. Lastly, at the beginning of next month, Lucas will no longer be the community manager of Pine64. But don't worry because Marek Klaus will be taking the role of steering the community in the future. This means he will be the one to communicate with contributors, engineers, and partner project developers. Also, Lucas will be the one writing the community updates, hosting the Q&As, and engaging with the community still. Congrats to Marek! We are now in the final layout phase for a powerful yet affordable RISC-V single board computer. The board will premiere in our signature Model A form factor, feature CPU performance which is similar to the Quart 64, offer plenty of I.O., and have a similar price tag to the Quart 64. Basically a Quart 64 but with RISC-V instead of ARM. The board will be available with both 4 and 8 GB of RAM, feature USB 3.0 and an open-ended PCIe slot, and the SoC has a Imagination Technologies BXE232 GPU which will be open source soon. And since the board is still a few months away from coming to the market, the source code could be available on launch day. This is something we'd like to pursue in parallel to our ARM-based hardware and will not be replacing the ARM-based platform. However, do look out for more RISC-V based offerings through 2023 because we have some candidate devices for RISC-V conversion and ideas for future iterations of hardware based on the architecture. Also, if you would like to own one of the first of our RISC-V boards to roll off the factory floor, there is a riddle on the blog post version of this community update and the first person to solve it will be getting the first unit that rolls off the factory floor. Good luck! The next production run of the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro are currently expected to be shipped in mid-July, with them already being listed as in stock in the store. Also, as most of you are aware, the PinePhone and PinePhone Pro's modem is essentially its own single-cord ARM computer, running closed Linux-based firmware. Over the past two years, the community put in an immense effort to improve and adapt the modem to better serve the phone. Legally, we have to warn you that modifying the firmware on this modem may violate your local laws, so this is a showcase and we are not encouraging reflashing the modem. However, it is now easier to switch from the closed firmware to the more open firmware by Victor. This community firmware contains no binary blobs in the user space, significantly reduces the power consumption and heat output by running at 100 MHz instead of 4 to 800 MHz, and it's easily installable through a GUI, no less. If you're running Arch ARM or Postmarket OS, all you have to do is open GNOME software, search for firmware, and download the GUI utility. Then, easily install it through the firmware utility. It only takes around 10 minutes and a reboot. Lucas has ran the firmware and said that the phone runs considerably cooler and offers some extra features that can be fun to play around with. In fact, Lucas finds it to be more stable than the original firmware in terms of less calls being dropped if the Pine phone runs too long. It's also more secure and patches the exploits used in the PinePhone malware from December. Also just for fun, Victor has a special release of the firmware that bundles X11, a VNC server, and of course it can run Doom. The PinePhone's modem can run Doom. Let that sink in. Doom on a modem. While we don't recommend reflashing the firmware, we do think it serves a purpose and has an application in places where unlicensed modem firmware is legal. Also, us and the developers are not responsible if something goes wrong while you're flashing this. Maggie has been working on a calibration application for the PinePhone's cameras. The app will allow developers to calibrate the cameras on the fly and offers live streams of MJPEG via HTTP. The camera has been designed with ergonomics and optimization in mind, making calibration a lag-free and intuitive experience. The ultimate goal is to make it easier for applications such as Megapixels to implement PinePhone Pro's camera. 
On the subject of megapixels, Martine Bram released two new post-processing modes for the original PinePhone's camera. The new post-processing modes are not only much faster, but also highly improve the photo quality. This is an upgrade all PinePhone owners really ought to be looking forward to. It will be landing soon. The Pine Note has benefited from all the progress that the Quartz 64 platform has. This makes the basis for the Pine Note in very good shape. However, this isn't a single board computer and doesn't rely on traditional video output, which means that most of the work at this point centers around the e-paper display. It has worked in non-BSP Linux since January, so most recent work with it has been on improving usability. Currently, the main priority is refresh rate. Right now, the slow refresh rate makes it impossible to use for writing, one of the main selling points of the device. However, thanks to some breakthroughs, the developers are now much closer to a usable refresh rate. The Pine Note now supports A2 waveform, which allows for fast transitions between black and white on ePaper. This is like a very fast local refresh rate for just the area under the tip of the stylus. Samuel has also been working on a global refresh mode where it only refreshes altered parts of the display instead of the whole thing. Maximilian is working on a build of Debian with GNOME running under Wayland. This has a modified version of the driver that forces it to display only black and white pixels, so A2 can be used without dealing with colors and text rendering issues. This creates smooth, nearly flawless writing with the pen. What the Pine Note needs now is a default Linux distro and user interface to ship. We will be talking to Pine Note developers and partner projects in the coming weeks to work out an arrangement so that the Pine Note can finally ship with Linux pre-installed. So, that's the video update for today, and see you until next month.